Hey everybody, Jeremy Price, IU basketball columnist here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, by myself this evening. Uh, Mike Miller is away attending a funeral for his uh, stepfather, so thoughts and prayers with Mike and his family at this time. But uh, what a performance he missed here in Ann Arbor at Chrysler Arena as Indiana comes away with an 80-67 to victory, largely on the strength of a 25-0 run to end the first half, a 28-0 run all told after an OG and an OB3 to start the second half extended it. And Michigan went scoreless for a span of uh, the last 9.05 of the first half and 10 minutes and 29 seconds overall as Indiana blew this one open and basically cruised to victory. The final margin really came with subs in the game in the last couple of minutes. Other than that, it was a 20-plus point game throughout the second half, and Indiana firmly in control. And if you were looking for a statement game from Indiana heading into the second half of the Big Ten season, this was certainly it. The Hoosiers, after a slow start, fell behind 10-2, to 15-4, and I believe it was actually 17-6 to 6 as well after that. But especially that 15-4 to 4 point was where Tom Crean called a timeout and just was really irate with his team. The defense was coming off of shooters, collapsing on drivers, not maintaining responsibilities, just, just basically the, the breakdowns that we've seen from time to time with this Indiana team. And all of a sudden, it, it just seemed like Indiana flipped the switch. They got some things going offensively. Yogi Ferrell got a couple of quick buckets. Uh, some shots started going in, and the defense really came to life. Indiana eventually tied the game at 24, and uh, it was 24-20, actually, Michigan, and the Wolverines did not score again in the first half. By halftime, Indiana had a 45-24 lead, and the game, for all practical purposes, was over. It was uh, one of those things you, you rarely see, if ever. Um, and talking to anybody after the game, pretty much anybody you talk to after the game had never seen anything like it. Uh, John Beeline, Michigan coach, said he called two timeouts, probably should have taken a third, which he's never done in his coaching career. Uh, former Michigan uh, player Max Biefeldt, IU grad transfer, uh, talked post-game about what it was like to come back here, but he said he'd never been a part of anything like that 25 nothing run, that it was uh, really unbelievable. And all the IU players insisted that they really didn't realize the run they were on at the time. They knew things were going well, obviously, but they didn't realize just how well. And Indiana coach Tom Crean said uh, he didn't know about it till he saw it at halftime, and his reaction was not to tell his team because he didn't want them to know what kind of run they were on. Uh, and then I guess the, the other big thing is, besides that run, is the fact that Indiana was able to keep the pedal to the metal for most of the second half and, and keep the game from becoming competitive again, especially coming off uh, Saturday's game against Minnesota where a 16-point lead in the second half completely disappeared and actually turned into a one-point deficit at one point. A 17-point turnaround in the second half would have made this one a four-point game, uh, real interesting, real quick, but Indiana never allowed that to happen. Uh, the defense maybe wasn't as strong consistently in the second half, but it got enough stops when it needed to, forced enough turnovers, and Indiana just kept scoring and scoring and scoring. And this was one of those games where, sure, they made some three-pointers, but again, it wasn't strictly reliant on the three-pointer. Indiana did settle for probably way too many threes, especially early in the second half, but Indiana's ability to score in transition, to score off the turnovers, to score off the Michigan misses was really what, what served them well. That's what really got them going in the first half was the ability to score in transition. And then in the second half, once they had that lead, they sort of realized that with some patience that they were going to get good shots, and they did. Yogi Ferrell wound up with 17 points, 9 assists tonight. Robert Johnson had 16 points, and OG Ananobi tied his career high with 11 points. But I don't think the offense is what people will point to with OG Ananobi in this game, or maybe in any game for that matter. Defense has sort of become his calling card or, or his strength of his game. There's little doubt about that. And it was again tonight. I mean, it's no coincidence that he came into the game just uh, just a few seconds before Michigan made the three that forced the Tom Crean timeout at the 1430 mark of the first half. And right after that was where Indiana started to get back in the game. And it was really the job he was doing on Zach Irvin. Uh, and, and from there, it just seemed like Michigan as a team started trying to do individual things and, and make individual plays instead of spreading the floor, instead of moving the ball doing the things that were ha getting them success in the first place. And Indiana really did a good job of staying at home, staying out on shooters, staying glued to guys, and credit uh, OG and 
Robert Johnson, and even Jawan Morgan, who came, again came in and gave some good first half minutes for Indiana, and, and the defense was just night and day from the first six minutes to those last, especially the, the last ten minutes of the first half. So, big road win for the Hoosiers in Ann Arbor. If you were looking at this game as a litmus test for where Indiana would possibly go in the second half of the season, the early returns are certainly very good for Indiana where they not only got a road win, but a dominating road win, one that suggests that they're capable, fully capable, of being among the elite teams in the Big Ten this season. There are bigger games, tougher teams, higher ranked teams ahead than Michigan. Michigan had a lot of the same question marks surrounding it that Indiana did coming in with a schedule that really hadn't pushed it other than a loss to Iowa. But Indiana throttled Michigan tonight and certainly made its case that it could be among the Big Ten's elite teams going forward. Of course, before Indiana gets to challenging the best of the best in the Big Ten, and that would mean Iowa next Tuesday night at Assembly Hall, there's a little matter of a road game at Penn State coming up this weekend on Saturday for the Hoosiers to negotiate first. And that'll be a real good test of their focus and sort of where they're at as a team if they can go on the road to Penn State, a team that, that's typically given them a hard time and is certainly capable, especially at home, of giving teams a hard time. The Nittany Lions don't have the explosiveness that Indiana has, and if the Hoosiers can show the same kind of patience and defensive discipline they did against Michigan, they should be in good shape on Saturday. But that's for another day. For tonight, it's a chance to celebrate a road win at Michigan and an impressive one at that, and we'll see where the Hoosiers go from here. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you later.